Hi guys, this is Jordan from Rapido, and I'm back with our next kind of irregular unboxing video. Uh, currently it's the uh, end of November 2021, and we have uh, production models for two different HO scale projects. Um, the first one I have here today is the production samples for the NSC barrel ore hoppers in two different variations. Uh, as you can see, we've already got some of the CN cars and the Ontario Northland Progressive Scheme uh, unboxed here. So uh, let's have a look at the other ones I've got. Uh, let's get them out of the box. Well, first off, this is the Ontario Northland uh, Chevron Scheme long barrel car. Let's we'll slide that out of the box. Got our clamshell wrapped up in plastic. Just lift the car out there, put that aside. As you can see we've got the uh, kind of the instructions with the exploded parts diagram. And we also have the uh, ACI labels or tags if you want to put those on, on separately. So that's the Ontario Northland long barrel car. And of course we have the short barrel scale test car. So let's get that one open next. Basically the same packaging, but the clamshell, just pop that off. Ouch, a little bit tight there. Put that aside. And there is the scale test car. Now that I have these unboxed, uh, why don't I throw it over to uh, Dan Darnell. He did a segment about six months ago. I think we filmed that back in the spring of uh, 2021. Um, we'll recycle some footage, uh, reduce our carbon footprint, and he can give you a closer look at the details. Take it away, Dan. Dan Darnell from Rapido Trains Inc. And since Jordan was banging on my door the, today to show you your cars, I thought I'd bring them outside and give you a good view of them. These cars were designed, I believe, in about 1966 and delivered to O&R and CN in about 1967-68. And then in 1973-74, they both went back for the bigger version of the car. Uh, most of these cars survive today in secondary service. Most of the short cars have been turned into ballast hoppers. And the long cars have been turned into cement service and other dry chemical powdered service. These cars are loaded with detail, including real rubber air hoses, see-through walkways, all the brake piping. And then underneath the car, we have all the ribbing and the slope sheets and all the different um, mechanical linkage to open the doors. Now, the doors are non-operating on these cars, but the detail is there and it's exquisite. The long cars have conventional braking. You can see the brake cylinders, the brake actuating rods, and the brake shoes on the trucks. Up top you can see the cylinders and the triple valve with all the piping. On the short cars, there was no room to do all that. So basically most of the brake rigging wound up on the deck of the car. And then underneath, the brake cylinders are actually on the trucks. So they're truck mounted brakes. And we've done both versions of the car so that they're prototypically accurate. On the roof, we have the rubber tires that open and close the doors when loading at the Dane mine and unloading at the bottom at uh, DeFasco Steel in Hamilton, Ontario. Okay, for more prototypical information on the cars, please visit our website, repeatotrains.com, and look up Bram Bailey's nice article on the masterclass of these cars. He gives a complete history of the cars and their operations if you want to know more. Okay, Jordan, time to go. Bye. Okay, thanks, past Dan from six months ago. That was a great look at the details on our uh, barrel ore cars. Next up, we have the HO scale X72 and X72A box cars. So first off, we've got the Penn Central uh, small logo car here. This is uh, an X72. I will just take the tape off the end of the car here. Remove the sleeve, put that to the side. We'll open up the box. go. So we have the clamshell. Very simple. Just pull the uh, top off, put that to the side, and the base. And there's the car. Of course we have our instruction manual with the construction uh, of the car on the back there. A couple of extra little bits. And there is the X72. As delivered, they were all delivered for Penn Central around 72-73. So they would have had this version of the logo or the larger PC. Uh, there's a couple of small other paint details, but basically they were pretty much the same cars. Now in 76, they went to Conrail and again got a few different paint variations. This is the smaller logo 
Uh, this was repainted around 1978. Uh, some were repainted as early as 76, uh, I believe. And there was one that actually got a really kind of neat blue and white scheme, which uh, we might do as a special in the, uh, the next release. Uh, we've got the two panel uh, cot stencil on there, um, the yellow wheel dot. So this is uh, very typical of a late 70s kind of Conrail car. And of course, we've got the 70 ton truck with uh, 33 inch wheels under all of these models. One of the other initial owners, they only bought a handful, about 10 cars, was Western Pacific. and We've done that as well. This is a little bit later in the 70s, uh, kind of mid to late 70s. Uh, they were built in 72, but they would have got the uh, cot stencils uh, kind of towards the late 70s there. And this is the most common version that you would have seen uh, on the rails. And they lasted quite, quite a while too. I'm not sure what their disposition is, but um, they lasted for for quite a quite a time and there's the uh, the underbody there full underbody detailing all the brake rod brake equipment whatnot this is a keystone underframe uh, under these cars as opposed to uh, some of the other cars we've done would have uh, hydro cushions and stuff like that you can see all that uh, prototype specific detail we've got CN in the I think it was the late 80s early 90s CN picked up a whole bunch of these cars I guess when their leases came up and they uh, they kept these in service quite uh, quite a while. I don't know if there's many on the rails still. I think they mostly disappeared as they're approaching their 50th birthday. But uh, these were a very common sight on CN uh, right into the 2000s. So we've done those in uh, many different road numbers. And one of the other more kind of obscure versions is uh, a Pasco. I guess I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's a cool looking car either way. This is like a 90s, 2000s repaint. You can see them in Mexico. I don't know if they run up, ran up in Canada too often, but uh, U.S. And, uh, and Mexico, they were, they were kind of on both sides of the border. One other detail you can see that we've included on these cars is uh, based on the prototype, we've got different type of uh, coupler cut bar. So either the style that you see here on the Western Pacific car or uh, this style as, uh, as you can see on the uh, a Pasco car. And we've done those as uh, appropriate per, per paint scheme. So that's just a very quick look at the X72 boxcars. These are actually in transit from the factory right now. We're not sure exactly when they're going to arrive, probably maybe early 2022, maybe January, February. Uh, of course, shipping times right now are pretty unpredictable, so uh, we'll see uh, when those show up, but probably the next couple months. And that pretty much wraps up this month's unboxing video. We've got the X72 box cars and we have the short and long barrel NSE ore cars all in transit right now and due this winter. And of course we will be back uh, early, uh, early in the new year, probably January or February with our next unboxing video. We've got lots more stuff on the, uh, on the way. So thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.